Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out. In the video today, we're answering a viewer question. Jim R. asks, why is it righty-tighty, lefty-loosey with screws? One of the so-called six classical simple machines, the others being the inclined plane, the lever, the pulley, the wedge, and the wheel and axle, a screw is nothing more than an inclined plane wrapped around a center pole. While today screws come in standard sizes and typically are tightened by turning clockwise and loosened by turning counterclockwise, this is a relatively recent invention. A great example of how things that seem simple can be really hard to do right, the development of the predictable system we enjoy today took about 2,000 years to perfect. Architus of Tarentum from 428 BC to 350 BC, the friend of Plato, is believed to have invented the screw around 400 BC, while Archimedes 287 BC to 212 BC was one of the first to realize the screw's ability to fix things together as well as to lift water. The Romans developed hand-cut screws and made them from bronze and silver. Early on, screws of all sizes were used to press olive oil, help irrigate canals and drain bilges, and of course, attach things together. Nonetheless, since these early screws were made by hand, threads were rarely precise and varied according to the preference of the craftsman. By the mid-16th century, Jacques Besson of the French court had invented a lathe that would cut a screw, although it took another hundred years for the process to take off. The modern lathe was created later by the Englishman Henry Maudsley in 1797, and with it, screw threads could be cut with great precision. Despite this, there was no uniform system for either screw sizes or threads. This was remedied by Maudsley's apprentice. Joseph Whitworth, who lived from 1803 to 1887, beginning in 1841 when he presented a paper advocating for a uniform system of screw threads to the Institute of Civil Engineers. His two-pronged suggestion was simple. One, the angle of the threads should be standardized at 55 degrees, and two, the number of threads per inch should also be standardized, although they would vary depending on the diameter of the screw. That the screw would turn to the right when being tightened was likely already a well-established principle, and is thought to be because right-handed people are stronger when they screw clockwise, and the vast majority of people are right-handed, between 70 and 90 percent. Whitworth's idea was popular, and soon after he suggested it, the British standard Whitworth, with its rounded roots and pyramid thread crests, was adopted throughout England, the United States, and Canada. This had all happened by the 1860s. Nonetheless, it was not an easy screw to make, and it required three kinds of cutters and two kinds of lathe. To alleviate some of the problems with manufacturing a British standard Whitworth, American William Sellers in 1864 invented a thread that had flat roots and crests, a not insignificant modification as this screw could be made with just one cutter and one lathe. Faster, easier, and cheaper, the Sellers screw thread became popular in the United States and soon became standard among America's railroads. The British stuck with Whitworth's slightly fussier screw, although the different standards posed few problems until World War II when British, Canadian, and American troops commingled their equipment and repair parts. After the war in 1949, Canada, the United States, and the United Kingdom agreed to the unified thread standard based on the inch with a 60-degree profile. Shortly after, the UK adopted the metric system. System, and in 1960 its International System of Units SI, as well as its ISO metric screw thread. This also had a 60-degree profile. Globally, a right-turning metric screw is the standard, though in the US about 60% of screw threads still follow the inch-based unified screw thread system. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. There's a button on the screen as well as below the video. Also, I'd like to take this moment to thank our patrons on Patreon. If you're interested in supporting us with a small and totally voluntary financial contribution, please do consider heading over to patreon.com forward slash today I found out. And as always, thank you for watching.